Leader to Leader, Conversations with State Officials. The ARC of Pennsylvania hosts an interview with Kathy Bookfar, Pennsylvania Secretary of State, by self-advocate and the ARC of PA employee, Sarah Tagline. The Leader to Leader series is an opportunity for individuals with disabilities and their families to hear from state leaders about present and current issues impacting the disability community. Good morning, uh, Secretary Bookfar. Thank you for joining us on our second uh, Meet the Secretary series. And this is a new uh, initiative by the ARC of Pennsylvania to allow the self-advocates that we represent uh, a really an opportunity to ask you the questions. Um, Secretary Bookbar has served as the Secretary of the Commonwealth since January 5th, 2019. In this role, uh, Secretary Bookbar leads the Pennsylvania Department of State. And the mission of the Department of the State is to promote the integrity of the electoral process, to support economic development through corporate filings and transactions, and to protect the health and safety of the public through professional licensure. The Department upholds the highest standards of ethics and competence in the area of elections campaign finance, notarization, personal solicitation, and professional boxing, wrestling, and mixed martial arts. So welcome, Secretary Bookbar. Thank you so much for joining us um, today. Uh, your interview, you'll be uh, interviewed by Sarah Taglang. Sarah is a graduate of Millersville University and Penn State University Career Studies Program. Um, and she joined the ARC of Pennsylvania as our administrative assistant about a year ago. So welcome, Sarah, as well. And Sarah, I'm going to turn the interview over to you. Thank, thank you, Sherry. Um, good morning, Secretary Buffer. It's a pleasure to meet you. This is my first question. What is your role in state government? First of all, thank you. Sarah and thank you Sherry for for inviting me to join you today. It's really critically important that we get accurate information out to all voters in Pennsylvania about the election and how to vote. So my role in uh, Pennsylvania is uh, as Secretary of State. I oversee for the purposes of today's conversation, I oversee elections in Pennsylvania. I'm Pennsylvania's chief election official, and I work very closely with all 67 counties across the Commonwealth to make sure that every voter has the ability to vote, you know, in an accessible, secure, and safe election. Um, and then we do a number of other things. As Sherry mentioned, we also oversee professional licensing and uh, the state athletics. So if you're interested in becoming a professional kickboxer, let me know, um, as well as nonprofit organizations and corporate uh, registrations as well. So a mix of things that touch people's lives in employment, voting, um, and, you know, and their businesses. Thank you. Um, does my voice matter in the voting process? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Every voice matters because we were, you know, our ancestors and, you know, we just recently celebrated um, the 19th, the hundredth anniversary of the passing of the 19th Amendment uh, when women uh, finally received the right to vote. Um, and, you know, and it took decades longer for many others, like voters of color, to actually realize that right. You know, it took the civil rights movement. And for voters with disabilities, it's taken other laws to make it truly accessible, right? Like the Americans with Disabilities Act and the Help America Vote Act, which we can get into in a little bit. But the critical point here to your question is, Every person in this great nation has the ability and the and the right to express our voice and participate in our democracy. So I can't say that more strongly. Everybody needs to vote, <laughs> like you, uh, and what, you do. Uh, what are the different ways that people can vote in in the November election? So um, Pennsylvania in the fall of 2019, just passed a new law. It was historic bipartisan legislation that um, gave up 
all kinds of new ways to vote. So previously, um, we had only had two ways. You could vote in person on election day or you could vote absentee. Now every voter has the right to vote by mail, even if they're not going to be absent from their municipality, even if they don't you know, have a specific reason why they want to vote absentee, you can just vote by mail because you choose to, because you feel like it. Um, so there's vote by mail. There's also in-person early voting now. So every voter, as soon as the ballots are finalized, which are going to be later this month, every voter can call up the county election office weeks before election day and say, when are you open? When do, where do you have locations where I could go in-person early to vote? They could go to their county election office. Um, they could apply for their ballot. They can fill it out while they're there, and they can cast it, hand it back in, all in one visit, weeks before election day. And, and then, of course, a third way is the traditional way, um, in person on election day. So on November 3rd, polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. We'll talk about the accessibility options and all these choices. Um, but that is the standard, you know, election day vote. We're going to make sure it's safe. All the poll workers are going to have masks and gloves and the plastic dividers that they call sneeze, sneeze guards, face shields. There'll be social distance markers. So any way you vote, um, it's all good. It will all be safe and secure. Thank you. How do, how do I find out who's running for office? So there's um, there's a couple of places you could go. So mo I think most, if not every county, will have. And actually, I think on the Department of State website we might link to them as well. Once the once the list of candidates is finalized, and right now there's a statewide challenge pending, so it's should be should be certified any day now. Um, you can find a list of candidates on your county website, Department of State. And also there's some organizations, nonprofit organizations like Ballotpedia, um, Ballotpedia.org, BallotReady.org, where you could find out a little bit of information in addition to just who's on your ballot. Thank you. I care about people with disabilities getting real jobs, having access to college, and living in the community. How do I find out how people running for office feel on issues that impact people with disabilities? So I think, you know, there's, I mean, I, the internet is a wealth of information. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, you, you might want to try organizations like the League of Women Voters has a vote411.org. That's a good source of information. If you specifically are looking for information on issues relating to people with disabilities or any specific questions you have, you might want to reach out to like the Disability Rights Network of Pennsylvania or other um, or, you know, I'm sure the ARC can um, help connect with other organizations who work on these issues and can tell you where you can find out more information about these specific issues. And frankly, the candidates themselves, you know, often fill out questionnaires. So if you go on the candidates' west websites, they may have a drop down of issues. And if they don't have the answer to the question you're looking for, ask them because can, candidates need to be held accountable for the issues that impact every one of us. Uh, thank you for people who wait for people who use a wheelchair are blind or need assistance. How are they provided the support they need to cast their ballot? So I'll give you a couple of answers based on the different ways to vote that we just talked about. So um, let's start with in-person voting on election day. So a, a federal law requires that polling places be accessible. This is under the Americans with Disabilities Act and the Help America Vote Act. And part of that, um, the Help America Vote Act requires that every polling place have an accessible ballot marking device um, as part of, as present in and on and ready for use in every single polling place. So even if your county has gone to hand marked paper ballots um, or some system like that that may not be accessible, they have to, under federal law, also have ballot, accessible ballot marking devices. 
things. So what we did, you know, in the last two years, we have, we at the Department of State have required every county to upgrade their voting systems to the most secure, accessible systems out there. So what we did in order to test for this to make sure that these were accessible was we we had our regular sort of security and functional examination of these systems. But then we also had an accessibility uh, uh, test. So basically we had voters with disabilities, we had poll workers, um, and we had experts who study human behavior and usability of systems test you know, voting on these systems, and they would go through a standard ballot, and the voters with disabilities would give feedback, and um, and the examiners could see how usable these were and give guidance to the. So, in our reports about these new voting systems, we gave guidance to the counties about how to make these as functional and usable and accessible as possible. So, in addition, you know, it's one thing to have those voting systems, but it's another for the voters to know going into the polling place what options they have available. So what our team did at the Department of State was we created 67 individual websites, web pages for each county in the state. So that if you live in Tioga County and you want to know before election day what system is in use, what accessibility features, you know, will I be able to use it without assistance? Or if you live in Philadelphia or you live in Westmoreland County, you could click on your individual web page from votespa.com. So all of these are connected to votespa.com. There's a county dropdown. You put in your county and it will show you how-to videos, step-by-step -step instructions, and all the accessibility functions of the voting systems in place. So it allows every voter to go into their polling place knowing what they can expect. And again, and, and every poll worker is trained on how to use these systems, how to provide assistance if needed, and, you know, and how to make sure that they are as sensitive as they can be to voters with disabilities. So that's... Okay. Yeah, so that so that answers your question about in person voting. So, can I talk a little bit about mail absentee voting? Okay, so Absolutely. and you voted that way in the primary, right? Yes. So that's great, and um, you know this is a brand new option for all voters, though it, though absentee voting has been around for decades and decades in Pennsylvania. So it's, it, so, but what, what we wanted to make sure was that all voters, including blind voters, um, also had the opportunity to vote by mail if they so choose. So what we did is we just implemented um, an accessible ballot marking solution called OmniBallot. And it's going to allow, so let's say a blind voter or another voter with a disability wants to vote by mail, but needs a special remote um, mail option, um, or they need to use, they want to use, you know, their, their um, you know, special uh, applications on their computer that assist them in reading, um, and they don't want to bring somebody in to assist them, they can, when they apply for an absentee ballot, they can request the use of this special remote ballot for voters with disabilities. And basically, it will allow them to connect to a special portal, very secure. They'll get a special password and login. They can access, their ballot will be converted to an accessible ballot, and then they can use their applications to translate that to make it accessible for them. And also, special envelopes and accessible, accessible voting materials will be mailed to them as well. So it makes the entire process accessible for everybody. And we're implementing that for the first time now, this fall. So anybody should feel free to use that if you want to vote by mail and need accessible options. Thank you. If someone needs assistance, can someone help them in the voting booth? Yes. So if a voter needs, if a voter wants to vote in person on November 3rd, um, but they need assistance, they can just, all you have to do is when you go check in at the, with the poll worker, you tell them you need assistance, you sign a declaration, it's really short, basically says, I need assistance. 
and anybody can assist them except for three people. You can't have your boss, you can't have a union representative, and you can't have the judge of elections. Literally anybody else can help them in the voting booth as long as they request that assistance. Thank you. Can can their support animals join them in the voting booth as well? Yes. So this is permissible under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, and by the way, there's not a requirement that they be wearing a special vest or that there be any formal paperwork. Um, if you need an, a support animal, and there's not a limit, like it doesn't have to be a particular type of animal. If you have a support animal and you go, because of a disability, you go into the, when you go into the voting, um, the polling place, you know, only two questions are allowed to be asked. You can be at, you can be asked, do you need this animal because of a disability? And you can be asked, what task has this animal been trained to help with? And that's it. So they can't ask for paperwork. They can't ask, you know, for details. Um, they just need to, they can only ask those two questions. And then, yes, you can have a support animal with you. Thank you. Does your department hire people with intellectual and developmental disabilities? We do. Um, so the Commonwealth is very committed to making sure that every applicant and every individual has, you know, access and the ability to apply for, you know, you know employment across the Commonwealth, not just Department of State, but but county, county Commonwealth wide. Um, and in addition, we use vendors who prior who have a priority of making sure that we include individuals with developmental and other disabilities. So there's a vendor in place who does work Commonwealth wide, including with the Department of State, um, providing services to, um, to Pennsylvania residents on all kinds of different things. So this is something that we strive, very committed to Commonwealth wide. And if anybody sees a posting that they're interested in, they should certainly apply. Thank you, Secretary Booker. Back to you, Sherry. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. You great job, Sarah. You did a really good, good job. Uh, Secretary Bookfar, if I may, um, I have a couple of questions. If people, I know that there has, seems to be a concern about poll workers and the lack of poll workers. Is there anything that we can get out to our membership to encourage people to sign up to be a poll worker? That's a great question. Thank you, Sherry, for asking it. Um, yes, absolutely. So as you know, you know, I mean, poll workers have always been um, in high demand. And, you know, I my first job in elections was as a poll worker. So, you know, I can tell you, you never feel more like you're part of the cycle of democracy than you do when you're literally allowing people to vote. So um, you could go to votespa.com. And um, Ellen or someone from our team can send the direct link if you want to put it on the screen. But what if you sign up for votespa.com, we will connect you with your county of residence. So people can do it from all around the state. Um, and it's such a critical role because, you know, especially now this year, you know, some of our poll workers are older or may have, you know, health you know, health concerns and might be more fearful about um, serving. And so this year, it's never been more critical. And, you know, and again, it is it is the most rewarding thing you could possibly do. It, it is literally enabling our democracy to run. So encourage everybody to do it. It's a great, it's a great thing. Go to votespa.com, sign up to get, you can get more information as well. Um, thank you. Is there a deadline that people must apply to be a, a poll worker just so we can put that out there as well? You know, technically under Pennsylvania law, as it stands currently, the, the counties can't even start filling vacancies until something like five days before election day. Um, and so we're trying to change that to allow them to be able to fill those vacancies much earlier. But right now, Oh, no, there's plenty of time. So, you know, I, I suggest people to go on now so that the county has your name. We had um, on September 1st, there was National 
Poll Worker Recruitment Day, which I call, you know, National Poll Workers Rock Day. <laughs> um, but it, it, it has really helped draw attention to it. Um, and so the sooner that, you know, some counties have greater need than others. Um, so the sooner you could, you know, sign up, the better, but you still have plenty right. of time. And one to more question. So. so Sarah addressed the issue with accommodations. So, you know, there's a lot of talk about long lines. You know, people are expecting long lines at the polls. So if, um, say, for instance, my 86-year-old mother who is determined to go to the polls in person or someone that might have a physical or um, a, a dis- any type of disability that prohibits them from standing in line for a long time, can they request to be moved to the front of the line? Is there going to be some accommodation that way? That's a good question. You know, there's not something technically in the law, but I think they should just ask. You know, I think a lot of people, you know, most people are fundamentally good and kind at heart. And if, if, and, you know, just like when you're on the bus or on the subway, people give up their seat for others. I think that people will do the same for voting. You know, I would just say, you know, obviously be kind about it. That's, you know, in both directions, right? But I don't, she should not hesitate to ask. Okay. One last question, because these are, you know, these are important questions right now. We're hearing so much also about, we may actually not know the results of the election. You know, we're used to waking up the next day, or if you're, if you're really in the long haul, you stay up overnight to wait for those final election results to come in to know who's president or your local representative. Uh, Are you anticipating delays in the results for Pennsylvania? You know, I think um, we could see as many as 3 million votes by mail. And just for context, you know, in prior presidential elections, it might be 300,000. So, you know, that's a huge difference um, in numbers. And so will it take longer? Yes. Um, so there's a couple of things. So first of all, we're strongly urging the legislature to allow counties to start what we call pre-canvassing the ballots, the mail ballots, weeks ahead of election day. So anything you can urge your members to do to contact their state representative or state senator and urge them to say, the counties need really weeks to give them the flexibility to do this. And they won't result, release results. There's not going to be like, you know, it's not going to be used for political purposes. They're just going to take care of the, people don't realize how long it takes to slice open the envelopes, extract the second envelope, you know, slice open that, extract the ballot, flatten it out so that it could then be fed through the scanner on election day. Uh, but all that takes time. So if you can urge your members to call their their representatives, that would be great. Um, in addition, the counties, because we had nearly 1.5 million in the primary that voted by mail, and again, just for context, in the last presidential primary, we had 84,000. So we went from 84,000 to 1.5 million. And, you know, so, the, it, and in the middle of a pandemic, with the office closures and skeletal crews because of social distancing, the counties got it done and learned a lot. And so they have, in the meantime, they're staffing up. They bought all kinds of equipment. Who knew there were machines called envelopers? (laughs) I didn't. (laughs) But they work, right? They literally help slice open, extract. So they're all they learn so much from that experience and going from 1.5 million to 2 million or to 3 million, if it's that many, is going to be a lot easier than going from 84,000 to 1.5 million. So they're doing great. They're prepared. Um, so will we know that night? No, I'd be, unless the, if the legislature passes the law, then yes, we really can know that night without that law, it's going to take at least a couple of days. Um, you know, a lot of, Secretary of State across the the country are going through the same exact thing. And we're all saying, look, just don't have that expectation. Like, if you don't expect it to be that night, then you won't be surprised when it's not. And the counties, what's most important, and I know we all agree on this, what's most important is that every vote is counted accurately. 
And then on top of that, that every vote is counted accurately as quickly as possible. And the counties are going to do everything they possibly can to get it done really quick. But it will be a different measure of quick. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you would like to tell um, our members uh, that you feel is important during this time? I, you know, I just want to really reinforce where we, where we, where Sarah started earlier with how important. So, first of all, thank you and thank the Arc of Pennsylvania for all you do because it's such critical work to make sure that every Pennsylvanian you know, has the information, the services, the support that they need. And in the voting world, you know, please listen to what Sarah mentioned earlier. You know, is your voice important? Absolutely. So however you vote, whether you vote early in person, whether you vote early by mail, or you vote on election day, all those options are going to be safe, secure, and accessible. You can get more information at votespa.com um, and just make sure you vote. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Secretary. And thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Thank you both.